Which dog do you use? I use Nazim. You use what? Nazim. What? Nazim. What the f is that? Ah, uh, forget it. What up, everybody? It's your girl July from Kickback Couture. As so many of you know, I've been an avid Reason user since the beginning of time. More like 2012. But on so many occasions, I would walk into a studio and see Pro Tools, Logic, Ableton Live, or Cubase, and people would pass me the mouse as if I knew what the heck they were looking at. I would say, uh, I don't know how to use this. And sometimes this still happens. So if my mission this year is to collaborate, I have to be at least somewhat dialingual or da pedestrious or da amorous or whatever the kids call it these days. So first things first, I forced myself to learn Ableton Live. It was so weird at first with the initial learning curve, but I eventually fell in love with some of the features. In this video, I'll be discussing Ableton Live 11. Let's get into it, shall we? The first thing I explored in Ableton Live was the transport bar. It was similar to what I've used in the past, but there were a couple of other unfamiliar icons, most notably the overdub button and the capture MIDI button. The overdub button allows you to add MIDI notes to an existing clip rather than to overwrite it. This was weird to me because the DAWs I've used before did it automatically, but I can see how overwriting a performance could be more efficient than stopping and hitting Command Z over and over again. The capture MIDI button also blew my mind. I had something similar in FL Studio where you can noodle around on the keys without recording and when you've magically got an idea that you forgot how to play, you can hit this button to make those happy accidents reappear. Now moving on to the session view and arrangement view thing. I was lost for weeks. In session view, you have the ability to trigger clips or individual MIDI recordings in combination with other MIDI recordings from different instrument tracks. Now this probably sounds like a loop, right July? It's called a loop, but no, it's like a live loop. You can juxtapose different patterns from each respective instrument track like this. This was fun to play with, but I actually like to finish my beats and add transitions and apparently a bunch of people create and lay out entire productions in arrangement view. Now, while I don't prefer that method all in all, it's worth noting that it is an option and playing with possibilities. There's this other little almost inconveniently placed button at the top right that switches the playback from the clips to the arrangement view. I was lost, again, I was lost for weeks with this feature. If you try live, be sure to burn this into your memory. I later found out that you could also DJ with Ableton Live. Although it's not my current focus, it's worth mentioning that Ableton Live is the best DAW for live performances. Moving on, we have the browser. It's a smart browser. Once you type in anything, it automatically starts narrowing down results. One thing that was weird about it was how it organizes VSTs. There are no pictures of said VSTs, nor are there pictures of the native devices. So you kind of have to remember things if you're new to having to remember things. Specifically, the plugin format, plugin developer name, and lastly, the name of the plugin. Sounds simple enough for a Pro Tools user, but I've accumulated so many plugins that this becomes an issue. Another feature I can mention is favorites. You can create your own folders, so you're limited to the colors of the rainbow and gray. You can store your favorite samples, plugins, and rack devices, which we'll discuss later. Next up, we have the MIDI sequencer. This was really awkward at first, but eventually I got used to it. 
The things that stuck out were clip length, how easy it was to automate inside the clips, and how difficult it was to click in notes when I wasn't playing. This may not be your ideal piano roll. You may be used to having MIDI tools such as a mouse, pen, eraser, razor, mute, hand, speaker, paint, chopper, strummer, humanizer, and so on, but all you get here is a mouse and a pen. To be fair, there is a way to mute notes and clips by pressing zero, and there is a speaker function that allows you to hear notes as you click them in here. There are also now scale and note helpers, which is new to Live 11, but not so new if you have the companion controller, Push. Again, more on that later. One more standout feature from the sequencer is the ability to hold notes on a MIDI keyboard and imprint them into the clip like this. Live also supports MPE, MIDI Polyphonic Expression. MPE allows you to modulate individual notes with pitch bend, slide, and pressure. In order to implement these modulations, you can either map the parameters and draw them in, or have an MPE compatible device like a Rolly Seaboard. Next up, we have the rack. This is where all the instruments and effects devices go. If you're heavy into VSTs, it's going to be super great. And if you're good with the native devices, and there are a generous amount of native devices, there will be a bit more color. Not super fancy, but it's arguably pretty sleek with a touch of dinosaur computer software vibes. Looks aside, the most important part of the rack is functionality. This rack area is complete with features that allow grouping, chaining effects, and other perplexing abilities to create your own devices with a nice collapsible frame in case you get crazy with things like me. If you're familiar with the macros on synths like Serum, you'll see a similar feature here and you can map up to 10 knobs at a time. One feature I wish was accessible without Max for Live is buttons. Activating a distortion at a specific level or turning a reverb on and off with the click of a button is why that might be useful. Racks can get pretty intricate pretty quickly. There are instrument racks, drum racks, audio effects racks, and MIDI effect racks, all stackable and compatible within the same rack. No need to separate the effects all at once if you don't believe in using sends or returns or just want to save the effects in the patch itself. You can. Moving on to the sounds and devices. Ooh, there are a ton of sounds and devices. There are more than 5,000 sounds and the library size is more than 70 gigabytes. So I sincerely wish your computer the best if it's not prepared. Instruments hailing at 17, effects storming at 60, and MIDI effects raining at 16. Let's start with the instruments. I won't go over every instrument, but I'll put up a nice list for reference purposes. Operator is bananas. Operator is an advanced and flexible synthesizer that combines the concept of frequency modulation, FM, with classic subtractive and additive synthesis. Analog is a physical modeling synthesizer. No samples involved, and it's not an emulation of anything just a culmination of some of the most welcome features from analog synths. Collision simulates mallet percussion instruments. Way more possibilities than a lot of sample libraries I've had. Electric is a software electric piano based on the classic instruments of the 70s. But again, no samples. Impulse is an eight slot drum sampler with complex modulation capabilities. It's super easy to enable individual outputs for further mixing. Sampler is a sampling device complete with key zones and a slew of customizable features. You can import multiple samples in it like a contact bank and tweak it however you like. Simpler is an instrument that integrates the basic elements of a sampler with a set of classic synthesizer parameters. Plus, you have slice mode and one-shot mode. Tension is a synthesizer dedicated to the emulation of string instruments. Wavetable is a synthesizer that combines two wavetable-based oscillators. 
two analog modeled filters, and a powerful but intuitive modulation system. The instruments I did not mention will be listed on the screen. Overall, the synthesizers are well fleshed out and are some of the best I've seen come native to a DAW without being an extra cost. I love the emphasis on physical modeling rather than sampling. You can get samples from so many places, but realistic simulations with a synth is hard to find done this well. There are 60 effects devices. I'll highlight a handful of my favorites. EQ8, so intricate. It's almost like a baby FabFilter Pro, just with limited bands. Glue Compressor is amazing. And the soft clipping feature sounds fantastic. Grain Delay is spectacular. The sound you can get with it would be out of this world if we weren't here to experience it. You have the basic stuff such as auto pan, auto filters, both beautiful and horrid distortion options depending on your taste, and nice time-based effects like reverb, chorus, flangers, and delay. It's like the developer took all the basic necessities of music creation and added extra sauce. Check out the screen for a complete list of effects. Next, let's briefly discuss the 16 MIDI effects. These are devices that transform simple MIDI signals into more complex MIDI signals like arpeggiator, chord, scale, pitch, etc. So if you're new to music theory, using these in combination with the scale helpers in the sequencer, you'll be able to generate some listenable ideas. Not that adhering to a scale makes music listenable. It all depends on what your goal is. Here's a complete list of MIDI devices. Crazy enough, the devices don't stop there. Ableton has another powerful world of creativity called Max for Live. Max for Live powers a range of instruments and devices in Live Suite and lets you customize or build your own devices, change the way Live works, and connect Live with the world around it. So this is a few steps further than simply building rack via mapping parameters to macros. You can create your own EQ, your own MIDI device, your own instruments. While Live Suite comes with a bunch of Max for Live instruments, you can also access a plethora of devices created by the Live community. Let's jump to mixing. Some of the key features that drew me to working with vocals in Live is the ability to add effects while recording, which you can't do in Pro Tools. You can easily group and send signals to different locations. For example, you can bypass the master channel completely, straight to the speakers, something EDM producers can appreciate, for kicks of course. The live mixer is expandable. The sends are off to the side, but can be accessed via both arrangement and session view. Now, those are the surface level features. Let's talk about the guts, but only my favorite organs, of course. VST2, VST3, and audio unit support. Freezing tracks for saving CPU or collaboration per track CPU meters. Audio to MIDI transcription allowing harmony extraction. Simple audio slicing. Video support. Multiple warping modes. Custom theme importing. Packs with illustrious samples as expansions. And Push 2 integration. Push 2 is a controller compatible with every aspect of Live. In fact, there are a multitude of controllers that are due to Live's incredible affinity to performance-based options. The Push 2 specifically automatically maps to Live's devices and shows the parameters on the screen, similar to Native Instruments plugins with machine or control keyboards you can make an entire production without touching the computer in the process. You can change the pad layout to match the keys and scales. You can chop samples, you can overdub takes, and you can quantize those takes. It's also worth noting that Live plays well in terms of compatibility with virtually every plugin and hardware controller developer. You won't have to question whether there's something that will work in Live or not. Chances are it's gonna be tested and verified in live before you get to it. People who want to use a music creation software that they won't outgrow 
Seasoned producers who wish for more fun and general software and controller compatibility, and performers who want to take their productions to the stage with confidence will enjoy the powers of live. While it's one of the most expensive dolls you can buy at 749 USD, it's going to give you a nice bang for your buck. There are standard and intro versions with fewer features and more affordable access and of course, financing options to make the monetary hit a bit easier. Intro is $99 and standard is $449. If you're a live user, I have a playlist of tutorials on music production, using effects, and some exploration of Macs for Live devices. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up symbol to let me know and comment which doll I should try out next. No. This video was not sponsored by Ableton Live. And yes, I do still use Reason. It's all culture, kickback, and cook up.